All right, so we got a PlayStation 5 Pro review from IGN. Now, before I even, you know, get to the video, I'm going to put you guys on game a little bit, all right? Now, today is November 6th. Tomorrow is November 7th. That's when, like, you know, it officially comes out, I think, worldwide, whatever. There are 12,300 PlayStation 5 Pros out there. So, if you want to hurry up and get yours, get yours. Now, bro, I imagine that there's thousands of people right now as I talk refreshing the site right now. I think you can actually get a uh, PlayStation 5 Pro on Amazon and like um, I think you, you can try to get one like in stores and stuff like that uh, make sure you don't get scammed okay I'm, I'm putting everybody on game right now so I don't want anybody to be like oh well you know oh I got robbed for you know twelve thousand dollars like what like what you got robbed for twelve thousand dollars for buying a PlayStation 5 Pro that's absolutely insane when to uh, check out IGN's uh, review for the PlayStation 5 Pro to see you know everything about it and um, yeah let's go to it let's go you're welcome, by the way. I just put you guys on gaming. There's 12,000 of these. Okay, we. The PlayStation. Right, I will be pausing the line in this video. The, bro, this video might be like 30, 40 minutes. I'm sorry. 5 Pro seems like it should be more exciting than it actually is. It's without question the most powerful console you can buy right now. And the enhanced games I've been able to play ahead of launch do look great and run Ooh. much more smoothly than the standard PS5. Okay, wait. All right, now listen. I did see the Marvel Spider Man 2 PlayStation 5 Pro trailer. Um, I, I mean, like, I saw it, but, like, I didn't, like, I didn't see it. Like, I saw that it popped up on PlayStation's, like, you know, um, YouTube channel, whatever, but I didn't, I didn't actually see the trailer, whatever. Um, if you guys want me to, like, get my take on that, we can. Uh, but, like, so far, the actual design of, like, the PlayStation 5 Pro, um, it, it looks pretty cool. It, obviously, like, it's, like, skinny or whatever. It has, like, the three stripes or whatever, just like how, uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro had, like, the three step things or whatever. So, I don't know if, if that's, like, a... If that's like a PlayStation only thing where they have like the three stripes or like the three whatever, I don't know like like what the three stands for technically, but what can handle thanks to some upgraded hardware and impressive upscaling tech. But it's also completely unsurprising that the faster PS5 is it looks shinier, well, faster, and it's also more expensive. Considering that the original PS5 can still provide enough power to run games competently in 2024, spending $700 means you have to really want the best of the best from your games True. to make the Pro a worthy investment. Yeah, it, it looks way more like shiny and like small. It looks like an actual router, so. Accounting for its price, you'll be disappointed to find that the PS5 Pro does not come with every possible bell and whistle. It does pack in a standard DualSense, but there's no vertical stand included, and if you're the type who has a library of physical games, be ready to shell out an extra $80 for a Blu-ray disc drive to install yourself. That is, yeah, that that's, yeah, and I'm sorry, it, listen, I usually don't really pause the video like that, I usually talk over the video while I was going, that's usually like my style, whatever, but like, I, I decided to like switch up the style, you know, for this video. Um, whenever it comes to like the like the disc drive so separately, I'm gonna be honest with you, that's a little uh. I don't I don't really like that, you know, because I'm like you know I'm paying 700 for it. I mean, bro, I guess, but like I mean the least you could do is give me like a little disc tray, you know. If I'm buying this thing for 700 dollars, like you know, like you might as well throw it in there. But listen, PlayStation. Here's the thing, right? I also get it because there's only 12,000 of these. That's it. There's only 12,000 of these. Uh, I imagine they're going to make more, I guess, later. I mean, this is like a collectible. I think PlayStation 5 is lab PlayStation 5 Pro is labeled off as like a collectible. So that's why there's like a limited like edition of it. So if I'm being honest with you, I see why like they sold it, so like sold it uh, separately or whatever. But if I'm being honest with you, bro, it's a little uh, for me, bro. I don't know. I, listen, I just got to be honest, bro. Like, like the... You know, I see what the like, like, like the business mindset, you know, version of me is like, yeah, like, you know, I'm, you know, working out like, I'm, I'm kind of like Bill Gates when it comes to this. But then like the human, you know, the human side of me, like, you know, it's like, uh, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like, you know, get that extra 80 just for a disc or whatever. I think you should only get it if you have like a, if you have a lot of PlayStation 5 games. I think you should only get it for that reason. But tune in. If you feel like Sony is trying to nickel and dime you on top of the $700 price tag, yeah. I'm not going to argue against you. Yeah, me either. Physically, it's a pretty sleek console relative to the enormous launch PS5, and it largely takes after the design principles of the slim model. The only major difference is that it's taller when standing vertical, which is accounted for by the fins in the middle that create a cross-section on the console. Yeah. It helps make room for the more robust internal components, but doesn't add much bulk to the existing design. It's also not noticeably louder than the original PS5, so you don't need to worry about it sounding like a jet engine when your games get really? intense. As far as thermals go, the PS5 Pro runs roughly the same temperature as the base PS5 under load, hovering around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius from the rear exhaust based on our thermal imaging tests. 
technical details, okay. It's a bit striking how little has changed from the original PS5 on the spec sheet. The Pro comes with a 2TB NVMe SSD, which is twice as large, but the same speed as the original super fast storage. That's so crazy because, give me one second, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go back real quick. Let's break this down real quick. Okay, so we got the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 5 Pro, uh, 2 terabytes, uh, EM, uh, NVMe SSD, and then you have the PlayStation 5, 825 gigabytes. What's so crazy is, without even knowing which one is like the PS5 or like the PS, uh, or like 5 Pro, whatever, if you were to look at both of these consoles, you would think that this one right here has the 825 gigabytes and then you'll look at this one and be like okay yeah this one definitely has like the two uh terabytes or whatever but like it's crazy because this is like the skinnier version the taller version um and, and bro and this literally has more space uh it has like a uh bro it's like a mini pc in here bro it, it's crazy how like the size is like can like kind of throw you off because you're like wait bro, like this should be the pro because it looks way more bigger it looks like there's actual like like an actual graphics, like you know, like like that, like this actually like a like a PS like not PS like a PC motherboard inside this one. Like this looks like the PS5 Pro on this side, but to be honest with you, this is the PS5 Pro, which is crazy. That can, that can actually throw like a new gamer off a little bit, but. Let's get that. Team, man. that addresses one of the main complaints about the launch PS5, which is that one terabyte goes very quickly when you're installing games that take upwards of 100 gigabytes at a time. Yeah. For context, an extra one terabyte in the form of an aftermarket SSD would run you around $100 if you want the same storage for a base PS5, yeah. which sweetens the deal when looking at the price difference between the PS5 and PS5 Pro. The big upgrade, though, is in the GPU, rated at 16.7 teraflops, which is a sizable jump on paper from the 10.3 teraflops of the original PS5. Really? So it says the Pro packs 67% more compute units and onboard memory that's 28% faster, resulting in wow. up to 45% better performance. In that console, Without context, that's crazy. Those numbers don't really mean much, but the details in my testing prove that they amount to a lot more than empty marketing promises. The important feature that these upgraded specs support specifically is PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR. Much like NVIDIA's DLSS, this is Sony and AMD's AI-driven upscaling technology that uses machine learning to construct images that can appear with a quality close to full 4K resolution without having to stress the system's hardware to generate that detail through raw processing power. Granted, it won't be exactly the same as native 4K since it's scaling from a lower base resolution, but it doesn't have to since you're not going to be putting it side by side with the real thing, and the vast majority of people aren't going to be able to tell the difference in most cases, yeah. especially while they're enjoying the higher frame rates and visual effects this technique allows. It's nice to see Sony is moving away from chasing raw computing power as the end-all be-all of console tech, and as upscaling continues to advance, so too will its implementation in games. Here's the thing, right? If people are... And, and I'm gonna just be, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. And I think the reason people are tripping over like the whole $700 price and stuff like that, the thing is, right? And I understand that this is like a rare type of thing. Only 12,000 of these are going out, 12,300 of these are going out. Um, but, you know, to be fair, man, like the average person, like he said, won't even, they won't tell. Um, some people would tell. Now, if you're like a diehard gamer, um, like, and you can just see the graphical difference just off of first glance. I know people that can do that. I know people that, that will, that, bro, like they can legit like play a PS5 game and then play a, a PS5 uh, Pro game and immediately notice the differences. Like there are people on the internet in real life that knows that, but that's not most people. Most people, bro, bro, they, bro, they get off of work or they wake up, they load up the game, bro, and they play. The graphics, yes, the graphics are amazing, but at the end of the day, bro, these people, bro, bro, they just queue up the game and they just go. There is no, you know, oh, queue up the game. Oh, my God, the graphics are so amazing. This PS5 Pro is, is absolutely amazing. They're not going to do that every single time they, you know, load up the game. Um, people who are really interested in graphics and stuff like that, um, they're going to do that. You know, they're going to just admire these graphics all day long. There's nothing wrong with that. But all I'm saying is, the, you know, the bro, the regular person like me and you, bro, we're not going to, like... Yes, the graphics are amazing, bro. Bro, we're just trying to play the game. It is what it is. So um, I do understand what he's talking about on that one. So 
As you'll see in our performance breakdown, PSSR is one of the major keys in creating parity between quality and performance options. It also opens the door for games to explore ray tracing techniques to a greater extent. Although mileage will vary based on every game's PS5 Pro specific updates, where developers will choose to prioritize different aspects of their respective games. So the PS5 Pro is a bit more complex than simply having one uncompromised Pro enhanced mode. Gaming performance, okay. The PS5 Pro's tech gives developers room to be experimental in pushing boundaries, especially with ray tracing because it packs enough power to hit higher frame rates without sacrificing as much graphical fidelity. There's still some level of compromise to be made though, so if you were hoping that the Pro would take out all the FOMO stress out of selecting between 60fps performance or 30fps fidelity modes, well, in some games, now there are even more modes to choose from. Alternatively, if you love having that control over how your games run, that's great news. In my experience though, the visual gap between these modes is much smaller than it is on a base PS5, often making the Pro's performance-centric modes the clear choice. Yeah. Let's start with a marquee PlayStation first-party game, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. On PS5 Pro, you get to choose between Fidelity Pro and Performance Pro modes. The latter offers visual quality that's identical to the base PS5's Fidelity mode, with all the original ray tracing features intact while maintaining a smooth 60fps. Effectively, the best of both worlds when compared to the PS5's modes. Yeah. However, with the Fidelity Pro option, Insomniac cranked the knobs even further, putting features like ray traced ambient occlusion, key light shadows, and further improved reflections on the table. But all those upgrades come at the cost again of being chained down to 30 FPS. You can tweak some of these settings to squeeze out a few extra frames, but I wasn't able to reach anything near 60 FPS even when turning everything down a notch. Horizon Forbidden West showcases another interesting implementation of PS5 Pro enhancements. It has three options, favor graphics, balance, and favor performance. Again, the performance-based mode is the way to go since it hits a stable 60 FPS while in some respects looking even better than the base PS5's graphics priority mode. And this is what, and like I said before, this is why the average person, the average gamer, right? The average kid, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, bro, again, the graphics are one thing, but at the end of the day, people just want to play the game. So, you know, and again, like if I'm playing, if I say, for instance, because obviously you can't really compare this. I mean, you can. Like if I'm playing like a multiplayer game, like multiplayer games and story game mode games, I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes to like story mode games, I'm more inclined to pick the graphics mode if I really want to just like just admire like the gameplay, like admire like the actual like uh, graphics or whatever. But if I'm being honest with you, like in most games, I will pick you know, um, the performance mode, because the performance mode, obviously, you know, the, you will like sacrifice the graphics a little bit, but bro, you, you still get those, you know, frames off. And to be honest with you, like in a lot of multiplayer games, you need that, you need those frames. Um, whenever it comes to a story mode game, you could really like pick and choose or whatever you want, because it's a story mode game. Most likely, you, you know, you, you know, obviously, you know, you're going up against like computers and stuff like that. Um, but again, for the multiplayer, uh, multiplayer side of whatever, um, you do want to, I mean, and most people do this, you know, most people sacrifice their graphics just for those extra, fr you know, frame rates or like frames or whatever. And, you know, to be honest with you, bro, it works out, you know, it works. So, you know, I, I really don't like the whole graphics thing, like where you can have graphics and frame rate like that. Again, that's a really big thing. You know, people want that. But at the end of the day, bro, most normal people, bro, if they just want to play the game. They're not really, you know, and, and it, bro, most people want to play the game and they want to win. And and I can't lie to you, bro. Sometimes, bro, the win comes down to a few frames. You're like, you know what, bro? I'll sacrifice the graphics, up the frames, call it a day, GG. So, I mean, it is what it is. It, it's really up to you, but most people will go performance mode, you know, just for the frames. You get finer detail and foliage, better lighting, and a better resolution rendering technique. Like, Especially I can, for I a can game see the like difference. Horizon, those extra frames I, make I the can. gameplay experience so much better, and you can still enjoy the lush vistas with okay, that. Okay, right there. Okay, okay. I can, right there, right there. Give me one second, y'all game like horizon those Hold extra up. frames make the gameplay experience so much better and you can still enjoy right there you could yeah you can definitely see the difference a little bit from the right to the left you can definitely see that on the right definitely looks a little bit better but you know people they won't people uh, pure people don't care bro enjoy the lush vistas just, with and that that's added clarity I'm just, I'm just the ps5 respect, pro's bro. graphics priority option on the other hand caps horizon forbidden west at 30 fps but pushes the boundaries with a higher base resolution Yet, I don't find the trade-off worth it since it's tough to distinguish with the Fantastic Pro Performance Mode. Yeah, the I curious that. part is the balanced option, which goes for 40 FPS. and strikes a middle ground with visual quality, but honestly, it's not worth the 30% cut in frame rate for marginal visual gains. I agree. The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered takes a different angle as well. 
it oddly retains the same exact two options available from the base PS5, graphics or performance priority. Yeah. But there's a new Pro option that uses PSSR to take 1440p resolution to output 4K while retaining other visual qualities of the PS5's graphics okay, mode and still right hitting there. consistent 60fps. It was already a visually impressive remaster on PS5, but the boost in performance while having all of its graphical details sing is nice. Of all the games that have gotten PS5 Pro updates ahead of launch, Alan Wake 2 is certainly the most interesting one. Yeah, Remedy decided to go see all in bit. on ray tracing with its graphics mode, and it's absolutely stunning, with robust reflections and lighting giving its world a much more striking look, especially in the way that feeds into its atmosphere. Ooh, yeah, yeah, the Pro I enhancements stretch the limits of what PSSR is capable of, however. In graphics mode, it uses a base resolution of 1224p and runs at 30 FPS to make room for all those sweet ray tracing techniques. I can see it. You won't get those big ray traced features in performance performance mode, but it will target 60fps with an image quality akin to the graphics mode on the base PS5. It has to use a fairly low base resolution of 864p to get there though. It's still a great looking game in this mode, although it's definitely a blurrier image. Regardless, I find Alan Wake 2 shows a noticeable improvement over what you get from the base PS5, even if there are still compromises to be made. What is F1? Now, when there's F1 a new powerful console, good. there's always a racing game to flex the hardware. Yeah. Taking speedy race cars down the track in F124 provides a pretty clear example of what ray tracing can do. When looking at the Pro Enhanced Quality Mode and the base PS5's Quality Mode, it's easy to pick up on the improvements in reflections and lighting, especially on rain-soaked tracks, and the Pro is able to do this by using PSSR to still target 60 FPS. Dragon's Dogma 2 is an example of where the PS5 Pro can bring a game out of the depths of weak technical performance to a much more playable state. By using PSSR, the Pro is able to put out noticeably higher and more consistent frame rates than the base console can, whether you choose to prioritize performance or graphics, which enables ray tracing too. Though it's not without okay. noticeable drops. I can see it. I mean, you got, but you got to be able to like, and here's the thing. Like I said, I'm speaking in the POV of a normal person. You got to be able to really pay attention to really see like the difference, you know? Um, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Like, I, like right here, right here. Look at this. Look at this right here. You see these rocks? You see how defined like each brick or like rock is? Over here, it looks a little blurry or whatever. And you got to remember, this is performance mode. One thing that I can say is that for the PS5 Pro's performance mode, it does look better than the PS5 um just performance mode just in general so i i will give him that like the, like the detail one thing that i admit like with, like with the whole like you know um like ps5 pro like you know performance or whatever one thing that i will admit it does look way more detail you look at the ground the ground does look way more detail but to be honest like it bro the normal person would not care about this bro they're gonna just keep playing the game you know and it is what it is you know and i'm just speaking in the normal person normal persons like you know um like vision on this you know the normal person bro they're just going to keep playing the game um and, i mean and obviously like the game i bet this game right here looks good on the ps5 and the ps5 pro so at the end of the day bro i feel like a lot of people are not really gonna you know um you know spend the extra 700 you know just you know for like a for like a you know for like a what five to ten percent boosting graphics i guess nah they're not gonna do that it's a powerful console, but it's not magic. I agree. On the other hand, something like Final Fantasy 16 is an example of how a game without pro enhancements, or at least an uncapped frame rate option to just let the extra power work, isn't going to benefit in a tangible way without an update, since it's bound by the limitations that were built for its graphics modes. Yeah. It's still capped at 30 FPS when prioritizing graphics, while the performance mode still targets 60 FPS with lesser visual quality. Is it worth now, that's it? a lot of technical information, but despite all those enhancements, the question still stands. Is it actually worth buying a PS5 Pro? Let's see what IGN says. The answer is always going to be, it depends on you. As someone who used to be a sucker for upgrading to new- They're taking a safe answer. I'm going to give my I'm gonna give my answer uh, at this. Shout out to IGN, but IGN, they, sometimes they take, the, they take the safe answer. It is what it is, but- all right. generations of high-end graphics cards to push my to PC to its limits, to the PS5 Pro scratches that old itch because I do notice and appreciate the differences it provides. The visual quality that the Pro Enhanced Performance Modes have thus far look fantastic, and it's all the more enticing because hitting 60fps gives a smooth gameplay experience that's tough to come back from. 
I've also found performance modes on the base PS5 to be lackluster in some cases, and since the Pro has shown the potential in addressing that shortcoming, I find that the new console can be a worthy investment. There are a few games out there now that make the Pro a more enticing prospect. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's performance mode on base PS5 feels too compromising to me, with in-engine cutscenes and close-ups on characters during pivotal moments looking muddled at 60 FPS. Thus, I bit the bullet and managed with 30 FPS gameplay so that I could get the visual experience that uplifted its storytelling qualities. It worked well enough for that sort of game, but I'd much rather have been playing at 60 FPS. With the Pro Enhancement patch, Rebirth has a new versatility mode that merges both the high quality graphics setting with 60 FPS performance into a singular mode, so there's no choice paralysis. And it delivers the exact type of experience I wanted. That said, I know and can fully understand people who don't care quite as much about having state-of-the-art systems to play their favorite games, so long as they meet a reasonable balance between performance and fidelity, which the original PS5 only rarely has a problem pulling off with existing games. And for a lot of people, playing at 30fps isn't necessarily a deal breaker, and if you're happy with that level of performance, you might as well be happier with a few hundred dollars still in your bank account. And the Pro is a hard sell for anybody who expects a whole new experience when they unbox a brand new console. The PS5 Pro doesn't fundamentally transform how games are played, it just makes them look prettier and run smoother. And if you're happy with how your games look and play on a base PS5, then it's absolutely not worth paying a premium to upgrade. Okay. Got that? Was that it? Yeah. Oh, Verdict, okay. Considering that the PS5 generation has largely been described as, what if the PS4 was faster? It's a little difficult to get all that excited about a console that promises to be a faster PS5. The PS5 Pro does deliver oh, on are that they gonna for rate sure, the, and if the you actual find the game? standard PS5 leaving more to be desired from a technical perspective, it's an intriguing prospect. Running updated games in the new performance modes gives you essentially the old fidelity modes, now targeting 60 FPS, sometimes with extra improvements. Sony's AI-powered upscaling tech is certainly impressive when playing games that have been updated for it, giving console players the same type of image quality and frame rate improvements that Nvidia's DLSS has delivered on the PC side in recent years. You're not entirely free from compromises because you often still have to choose between that new standard and even better looking fidelity modes at 30 FPS, though I found going with performance an easier choice this time around. At $700, it's not cheap, so you have to really desire that visual upgrade knowing that it doesn't transform the gameplay experience at a fundamental level. And to be fair, Sony never said it would. So as it stands, the PS5 Pro isn't essential, but it is certainly nice to have. Okay. First of all, shout out to IGN. Um, one thing I'm gonna say about this is I think I think seven is a good number for this. IGN, I can't lie to you, I, I actually agree with this because with set first of all, I wasn't even expecting them to actually look, like rate the console on like a numbers basis. I thought that, you know they was gonna be like, okay, cool, if you can buy it, you can buy it. Um, you know, to see like if it's worth it or not. I didn't actually know they were gonna like have like a a, a verdict on this, but it is IGN and it is like a and it is like a, it is a, a review. So here's what I would say about this, right? And I'm just keeping it one thousand percent real okay is the ps5 pro worth buying my answer to that is and i'm going to speak and i'm just i'm going to give my i'm going to give my take in a normal person's you know because i'm not like no high and mighty guy i'm not a, like a a billionaire or a millionaire yet um but if i'm you know <laughs> but if i'm keeping it real um i don't think that it's worth it um for the normal person um, and when I say no in person, I mean, you know, the kid that goes to work, comes home, play the game. I'm talking about, you know, the dads that, you know, that go to work, come home, you know, they just want to just, you know, uh, just play the game or whatever. Uh, I'm talking about, um, you know, like the, like, the, like the girls that play games, just just the normal person who plays video games. I don't think that this game, I don't think that the PS5 Pro is worth buying. And let me explain, okay? For all the PlayStation, you know, uh, you know, connoisseurs out there to kill me. First of all, I'm a PlayStation connoisseur, and this is why I'm talking on this. Um, the reason I don't think this game, this console is worth buying, is because, um, and this is just, just truth, bro. The game, like the console, is worth seven hundred dollars. Let's just put that into perspective. The actual PlayStation Five was what five hundred dollars uh, for like the disc version, four hundred dollars for the non-disc version. It's the new PS Five. Now, of course, everybody's going to buy it. It's the new, it's the new P uh, PlayStation 5 console. This was, what, three, four years ago, right? Everybody in their mama, bro, people were, bro, people were selling organs to get this, okay? If I'm being completely honest with you, I don't think that a console, yes, it has, 
slightly better graphics. Yes, it's more powerful. Yes, it has more space. Now, if you are interested in those things and you want to buy the console, uh, console, be my guest. Go ahead and buy the console. I'm not sitting here, you know, saying that you guys shouldn't buy it. But what I'm saying is, is it worth buying to the normal person? I don't think so. Especially if you already have a PS5, I don't think you're missing out on anything too special. I mean, you could just upgrade, you know, like your um, like, like your storage and get like, you know, one terabyte, two terabyte, whatever. You could like replace like your hard drive or whatever uh, for the PS5. Um, you know, you, and you don't have to, you know, spend $700 just for the new console, just for like two terabytes, whatever. Um, but if you are interested in more space, uh, you want your games to look way better. Um, not way better in the sense of like, oh my God, these are like in real life human graphics. But like, if you want your games to look slightly better, um, I mean, if you want your game to, if you want your, your actual PlayStation 5 to, you know, to run faster, I guess. Um, and again, you want like the two terabyte things and the ray tracing and stuff like that. Think, be my guest, go buy the thing. But if you, here's the thing to all the p people that have like pay or whatever you're not missing out you're not i swear to you you're not missing out on anything but again if you have the money and you want to go buy the thing go buy the thing i'm not sitting here judging you or whatever but we all listen bro we've all spent some money on con i'm gonna be honest with bro listen i spent money on 2k okay i have no reason to tell people to not to buy anything i spent money on nba 2k and the nba 2k i don't have a problem with y'all but let's just say i listen i spent money on on vc Man, I man, I wish I would have spent that on on on, on 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 pizza. I'm gonna be honest with you. 2K, I don't, you know, I don't hate you or nothing like that. It's just, I, that's just the facts. I'm just keeping it real. Um, and, and that's it. You know, if you wanna buy it and you got the money to buy it, and you really in, in your gut saying, oh, okay, like I really want it, whatever, then get the thing. Um, it's not like they just like you know just print out the PS5 whatever and it's just the same console. No, it, it's some differences in it. Um, but at the same time though, for the normal person, I don't think it's worth getting, it. especially like if you, if listen, if you got like an extra $700 and you're like, uh, I don't know, then I don't think you should get it because if you really wanted it, then you would immediately just go get it. You wouldn't really think about it. Now you do, you guys do come and I'm gonna be honest. I do this too. We all do come to, you know, YouTube videos to see if a game is worth it or whatever. And that will like help us like make our decision and my decision for you save your money save your money go buy your mom some flowers or something like that go buy your go, your, your dad uh, a, a new drill or something save your money pay rent um i don't know take yourself out for lunch don't i don't think you should spend you know 700 dollars on this new playstation 5 console because it's basically the same thing it's like it's like the ps5 pro if you have a PlayStation 5 right now and and you want to get a PS5 Pro, that's that's technically like getting like a 3.5 on roll on your on your report card. But if you get like a uh what do you call it? Like a like a PlayStation 5 Pro, it's like you get like a 3.8, 3.9. Like, yeah, cool, it's like a little upgrade, but like you still got honor roll. You get what I'm saying? Like you still or sorry, a high honor roll. Like you still got like a like a like pretty high grade, so like you know, like you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna die. I'm gonna just be honest with you. And it's a collectibles thing. Only twelve thousand of these are available. Um, obviously, I love PlayStation. I'm not sitting here bashing them or nothing. Like that. I'm not like you know saying, oh my god, yo, um, yo, 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 yo Mark Cerny, yo, 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 come fight me. Like I'm not you know getting on the internet going crazy at like you know people or whatever. Um, I'm a PlayStation fanboy. I am. But uh, am I, listen, am I paying that seven hundred dollars to buy this? I'm gonna be honest with you, nah, uh, -uh. I'm, <laughs> nah, bro. I'm ready for the uh, for that GTA Six uh, pre order. That's what I'm waiting for. I, hey, I'll buy that in an instant. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, you would too. Other than that, man, comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? I told you guys this is gonna be like a like, kind of like a long video. Uh, I know I yapped a lot, but that's my bad. Other than that, man, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and peace out, everybody.